$100 billion gone in 48 hours. It is unbelievable how China just crushed Intel's future. Intel just lost $100 billion in market value because China flipped a switch. In this urgent expose, we're diving deep into how one stunning policy shift from Beijing sent one of the world's most powerful tech empires into free fall, and why the shock waves are far from over. This is not just about a stock crash or some temporary supply chain hiccup. This is a high-stakes power play between two superpowers, and in the middle, one of America's most iconic companies, Intel, fighting for its future. You won't believe how fast it all unrevealed. Intel has been around for more than half a century. It helped shape the personal computer revolution, it fueled the internet boom, and it built the brains of billions of devices we use every day. But all of that legacy couldn't protect it from what happened in late April 2025. Seemingly overnight, China, its biggest market cut it off, not partially, not quietly, but with the full force of its government. The Ministry of Industry and Information Technology issued a sweeping mandate. Government agencies must replace all foreign-made processors, especially from Intel and AMD, with Chinese-made alternative. That single sentence rewrote the rules of global tech. Within hours, Intel's stock began to nosedive. Investors panicked, analysts scrambled to make sense of the policy, and within just two trading days, Intel had lost $100 billion in market capitalization. That's more than the entire GDP of Ukraine or Slovakia gone in 48 hours. It wasn't just a financial collapse, it was a geopolitical wake-up call. So, how did we get here? Why did China suddenly turn on a company it once relied on so heavily? To understand this, we need to zoom out and look at a much bigger story. One that's been quietly escalating for years. The US-China chip war. This isn't science fiction. It's one of the defining battlegrounds of the 21st century. Semiconductors. The tiny chips that power everything from iPhones to fighter jets are the new oil, and both the United States and China know it. For decades, Intel dominated the chip industry. It was the crown jewel of American innovation. But in the last five years, cracks began to show. The company missed key transitions in chip architecture. It lagged behind rivals like Taiwan's TSMC and California-based AMD in both performance and efficiency. Meanwhile, China was investing billions into its own semiconductor sector, determined to wean itself off Western tech dependency. That determination just became policy. This wasn't a spur-of-the-moment decision. Chinese regulators and policy advisors have been laying the groundwork for over a decade, with U.S. export bans tightening, especially on cutting-edge AI and military-grade chips. Beijing saw reliance on Intel and AMD as a strategic vulnerability. The response? Replace them fast. And with domestic champions like Lungsun and Fidium growing in capabilities, China finally had a viable alternative. But while this was a long game for China, it was a sucker punch for Intel. Nearly 27% of Intel's global revenue came from China. That's more than $17 billion annually. The company had entire supply chains, marketing departments, and R&D efforts tailored to serve the Chinese market. To lose it overnight isn't just a revenue hit, it's an existential crisis. What makes this more painful is the timing. Intel was already on shaky ground. In Q1 of 2023, it posted a $2.8 billion net loss, its largest in decades. Internal morale was low, major layoffs were already in motion, and CEO Pat Gelsinger was under enormous pressure to deliver on his promise of a turnaround. That promise hinged on two things, regaining chip leadership and maintaining global market access. China just torched the second pillar. At the same time, Intel's competitors aren't waiting. AMD, NVIDIA, and Apple's in-house silicon are all aggressively expanding. And in Asia, giants like Samsung and TSMC are investing tens of billions in fabs that leapfrog Intel's most advanced nodes. Every day Intel spends reeling from this blow is a day its rivals gain ground. Now, the US government is stepping in. The Biden administration has called China's move economic coercion and is reportedly fast-tracking incentives under the CHIPS Act to help Intel and other domestic manufacturers scale up production stateside. Intel itself has announced a historic $100 billion investment in building new fabrication plants across Ohio, Arizona, and Oregon. These facilities are meant to reduce dependence on foreign markets, but they won't be fully operational until 2026 at the earliest. Still, this isn't just about infrastructure or capital. This is about a company and a country waking up to a brutal new reality. The age of globalization is fading. The age of technological sovereignty is here. And in this new world, access to chips is as strategic as access to oil fields was in the last century. Midway through this upheaval, Intel has found itself caught in a storm of its own design. For too long, it relied on legacy advantages, brand power, government contracts, 
and past dominance. But the game has changed. The battlefield isn't just commercial anymore, it's geopolitical. If you're still watching, this is where things get even more intense. As Intel scrambles to regain its footing, China is moving with calculated precision. It's not just banning foreign chips, it's building an entire alternative tech ecosystem, from semiconductors to operating systems to AI frameworks. All made in China, by China, for China. And it's succeeding faster than anyone expected. Just look at Lungsen, one of China's homegrown chip makers. Once dismissed as a niche player producing relatively basic processors, Lungsen's latest generation of chips, built on the Lungarch architecture, now rivals some of Intel's mid-range offerings. These aren't just engineering feats, they're geopolitical statements. China wants to prove to the world, and perhaps more importantly to itself, that it no longer needs American technology to power its ambitions. Behind all of this is a deeply emotional, nationalistic motive that Western analysts often underestimate. China doesn't just want independence, it wants redemption. After decades of depending on foreign tech and watching US sanctions cripple its most ambitious companies, like Huawei, China is determined to control its own technological destiny. Every chip it designs domestically is a step closer to that goal. Meanwhile, inside Intel's headquarters in Santa Clara, the mood is grim. Leaked internal memos reveal growing concerns not just about lost revenue, but about long-term viability. Executives are worried that China's ban could start a domino effect. Effect. Other countries, especially those in the BRICS alliance or with deep trade ties to Beijing, might follow suit. If Intel loses access to emerging markets in Southeast Asia, Africa, or South America, its global footprint could shrink dramatically.